Welcome to Excel and Finance video number six. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Finance and Excel chapter 00. If you're in the class, go to our class website. Hey, we got to talk about cell references. Hey, but wait a second. I thought we already talked about cell references way back here when we were talking about formulas and functions. Yeah, well, we talked about them, but we only talked about them when using a single formula in a single cell. In this video, we got to talk about cell references. What happens to them when you copy the formula? Now, here's our deal. We're going to have a lot of, most of our calculations are going to be single cell calculations in this class. We're going to be doing big um, mathematical financial calculations. But sometimes we're going to have templates where we have a formula and we're going to we need to do the same formula over and over and over again. So we want to avoid doing this. Here's what we did in our earlier videos. We said um, if we want to ca calculate the net cash flow for the day, we say uh, cash in minus cash out. We had more cash going out than coming in, so we were down uh, minus uh, by. 4,000 some odd dollars. Now we could come down here and we could do the same formula again. In minus out. Enter. Equals in minus out. Now, by default, when you put a cell reference in, all you see is the column reference and the row reference. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. Let's hit, highlight this column and hit delete and let's try this again. Equals, and I'm going to say cash in, which is two cells to the left. Now from the point of view of the formula, it's not looking at B7, it's looking at two cells to my left minus cash out, which is one cell to my left. Now this is the default behavior in Excel. When you type in B7, if the formula is just going to stay in one cell and never be copied, then it is B7. But if you're going to copy it, that's not B7. It's a relative. It means relative to me, the formula. Where am I looking? 1, 2. That's why when we copy this down, it'll always look one cell to two cells to the left minus one cell to the left. And I'll prove it to you. B7. That is not B7. Control Enter puts the formula in the cell and keeps it highlighted. Now we've done this so far a couple times in these videos. Selection cursor. When I move the selection cursor, I, next to that little fill handle, boom, I see the crosshair or angry rabbit. I can click and drag all the way down. <gasps> wow. Let's just click right here and hit the F2 key. Look at the, uh, uh, this is called range finder, when the cell references light up with colors and then the cells themselves have a rectangle around them. That's called range finder, like a rainbow range finder. We can see, sure enough. That is not B7. Notice up here that was B7, but when it came down here, it changed to B8. That's because it's not really B8. It's always going to look two to the left minus one to the left. When I come down, enter F2, enter F2, enter F2. Every single one obeyed perfectly. They're called relative cell references. Now, a lot of times, that's perfect. Let's go down and look at another example. What happens here? I want to say I have these bunch of loans and a bunch of amounts. And we're going to get the same rate, but we just want to figure out what amount we want. What amount of interest can we afford in our monthly budget or uh, annual, if this is the case? Um, equals this one cell to my left times C16. Enter. Equals one cell to the left times. C16. Notice this blue one is moving down each time, but for whatever reason, this is lot. We need to always look at C16. So really, equals times C16. I do not want to have to type all these in. So, oops. Notice what I did. I went one too far. There's a few ways to edit this. One way is to double click and click right there. Another way is put it in edit mode and you can actually click on the side right here with that. That's called a move cursor when you see that four-way black arrow under the white arrow. You can drag it. All right, let's delete all of these and type it again. Equals this times this. Now, in this example up above, we copied it down. Let's see what happens here. The default behavior is 
relative cell reference. So when I copy, uh-oh, we got all sorts of trouble. Let's just look right. Value means that you're doing, you have an incorrect calculation or uh, formula element. Let me just hit F2 and look here. Well, value error means you can't take a number times a word. And then here, I don't know what that's, oh, that's a huge number. It's saying uh, that one times that one. But notice what happened. Up here, it was C16, but it's not really C16. It's one, two cells above me, from, from me, the point of view of the formula. So when I came down one, notice it obeyed. That cell reference is two above. Enter, F2. It's still two above. So we don't want a relative cell reference. I'm going to delete all that. Ugh. I'm going to click uh, delete, and we're going to type our formula. Equals one cell to my left, which I do want as a relative cell reference, times. And watch this. When I click on C16, right now, the default behavior is relative cell reference. But if you hit the F4 key, it puts the magic symbol in two dollar signs. Now, in our first video, we talked about Excel. There's only two directions, a column and a Whoops, in this case, it's a, a row reference. So put two dollar signs. It means dollar sign in front of the column and dollar sign in front of the 16. It is locked. Now when we copy it down, it's going to remain on C16. Now, there are other types of cell references, but in this class, um, we're only going to basically use these two types of cell references. All right, let's. Control Enter. Control Enter puts the formula in the cell, keeps the cell selected, and then let's try it. Now, I'm going to click. I see my angry rabbit. Click and drag. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom and hit F2 Edit. And sure enough, that is awesome. Did that save us a lot of time? One cell to my left times locked our annual rate in C16. That's called an absolute cell reference. I always call it lock because it's locked on that cell. But absolute and relative cell references, those are the two types of cell references we'll use in this class. One other thing, totally important when you get to a situation like this, equals relative cell reference, one to my left, times C16 and then hit the F4 key. Control Enter. Watch this. Remember we clicked and dragged? As long as there's stuff to the left, if you double click the fill handle, ready? I'm going to double click with, that's, that's the angry rabbit. I'm going to double click it and it automatically sends it down. And it goes, 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 goes until it sees a blank here and then it stops one cell above. All right, relative, absolute, those are the two cell references we'll see in this class. All right, we'll see you next trick.